All right, then everybody, uh, we're here as an early start today. Um, but we are going to do a another single out video today. We're going to be singling out the Audi R8 and the V10 Plus. This is actually probably my favorite supercar right now. And supercars are kind of getting in a weird spot where is the Corvette, a supercar, things like that. Um, there's a lot of options out there. You really don't have to just pick from Ferraris, Lamborghinis, and things like that anymore. You have every brand pretty much has its own. Ford does. Everyone's got one, right? So, my favorite is probably the the Angry German, the Audi R8 V10. Now, let's go with some facts right off the bat, as the late great MGK would say. Uh, horsepower and the base model, 533, and the V10 Plus, you're looking at 609. And curb weight, we're looking at 3,400 pounds and some change in there. I think it's like 25 pounds. So pretty strong car uh pretty pretty light for uh obviously most cars and uh it's got a v10 in it uh naturally aspirated v10 as well so even though nowadays turbos pretty much spool up immediately no waiting for turbos just you got your power right there on the throttle good to go and just like uh, most Audi models nowadays, um, it's got their Quattro or all-wheel drive system, which is delivering 30% power up front, 70% in back. So you are getting, especially for launch control and stuff like that, you're getting a great set of numbers to go. You're not just getting all 100% power in the rear wheels and risking breaking loose. So that means you're you're getting off the line fast. An all-wheel drive launch will pretty much always be faster than a rear wheel drive launch. Now, the Audi R8 is my favorite because just straight up looks and design, not a lot of people have them. It's not the most common. And to be honest, it's a supercar that would actually be affordable for a lot of people if they saved up and things like that. Now, affordable, of course, is relative to everyone. Uh, if you saved up money for a bunch of years if you saved up 10 20 grand you could get one now that is a lot of money to some people but if the car is your dream you'll make it work right if you really want that corvette you really want that viper mclaren whatever most people they can make it work if they just save up the money but you gotta be able to stick with it for years and years and that's a hard thing to do not a lot of people can, not a lot of people have their strength. So, you can always fall. Or maybe there's just, you run to some bad luck and you can't save your money. Anyways. A used one, nowadays, you can get all the way down to, uh, of course with more mileage and things like that. But if you go on to cargurus.com, do a quick look, you can find them for that a uh, 60 grand range, actually. Maybe not a spider or anything like that, but I'd go with hard top anyways. But they're they're more affordable. And for me, they've just always looked badass. They've always been just a little different. Um, maybe quieter is the word because not as many people talk about them, things like that. Whenever you talk supercar, you instantly think of, uh, for a lot of people, Ferraris, even though they might not know all the Ferrari models, uh, you usually think Lamborghini. Nowadays, your big hitter is McLaren. McLaren taking everybody out. Uh, their car is just insanely good. Hey, uh, that 720S is just quicker than anything. But for a direct competitor for the R8, you're looking at the 570S. Now, 570S is uh, 562 horsepower, so a little bit more than the base model R8, but a little bit less than the V10 Plus. 
but it's got weight on it. The McLaren is roughly uh, 3,200 pounds, and of course with a driver and stuff, there's a 100, 150 to 200 pound difference there, and full tank gas, who cares about all that. Uh, and they both had dual clutches, so not exactly sure how strong the Audi dual clutch holds up to the McLaren, but there's so much McLaren content out there that you can see that those shifts are just, just bang on every time. You have you almost have no loss of power band once you start going. And that's why they are so unbelievably fast compared to everyone else. Or everyone else being, I mean, most YouTubers, uh, they're doing street racing stuff and racing Dodge Demons and other Corvettes and things like that, so none of those are going to be near as quick as the McLaren, but the R8 just doesn't make it over here as often, people don't find it as interesting of a car, and with things like McLaren just being out there so good already, might as well just go with that. I'd like to go, I'd like to personally get a R8 over that, because there's just something that'd be cool about owning a car with a V10 owning a car that is considered one of the best handling cars ever, especially with that much power, things like that. I would, that would be awesome to me. Another competitor right off the bat is Lamborghini Huracan. That's interesting, that's semi-interesting because it is essentially the exact same car. The it has the same V10, Lamborghini Audi, owned by the same company. Uh, so exact same engine, uh, pretty much the exact same all-wheel drive system, things like that. Um, I am not 100% sure on that transmission for the Huracan. I know that the Aventador still use, does not use a dual clutch yet, but I assume the next big Lamborghini will. And that Huracan is also being picked up by a lot of, or at least for most people that we can see, a lot of YouTubers and stuff. It's pretty eye-catching. It's one of the easier to drive Lamborghinis. Uh, just good power, solid stats easy for a person to get into and just know how to drive right it's not it's not like a adventador or a diablo or anything like that where you had a risk of death while driving it because they're so just outlandish the huracan is very tame and that's a that's that's good it's not as crazy but it is good and then on your high end for competitors you have the if you're going for the v10 plus which is in that 200 grand price range then you're going to be looking at if you're looking at a car for also 200 grand that'd probably be where you hit huracan now huracan is a little bit quicker at 2.5 seconds versus three seconds for your 0 to 60 but there are other things like the ferrari uh 488 um, 458 no longer in production, so now 488. Uh, and that is 250 grand starting out, so more expensive than the others. Uh, McLaren's also sitting at anywhere. You can get a McLaren 570S for around, uh, you can probably get a used one for probably around 150, but I believe uh, MSRP, you can spec a low model down at like 170, 180 if you didn't want all Alcantara and things like that in your interior. <clears throat> so, on the high end you got the 458, which is um, 640 horsepower, if I'm not mistaken, and so obviously a bit quicker, And but it's actually about the same weight. If I'm not mistaken, the Ferrari might only be 100 pounds less, I believe. So, the R8 isn't at a huge disadvantage for that one. Now, MSRP for the R8, you can get the uh, V10 for uh, 140 grand, and of course, all this is like base MSRP. This is what it is possible to be at. Most dealers will never have an R8 at that low. Just like a oh, technically a. A challenger can be like 25 grand, but you won't see them for 30 for below 30 typically things like that So it is possible Maybe some way sometime to get an R8 for 130 uh, But if you want the V10 plus then you're hitting that 200 grand mark because you're getting a little um, Either 100 or 200 pounds weight reduction 
uh, you're getting the extra power, things like that. So, and especially for supercars, anything that adds just a little bit of advantage usually comes in thousands of dollars. I mean, for most people, even the paint color can cost ten grand for most car companies at this level. Uh, and talking about paint color, Audi and the RA probably have, in my opinion, one of the best colors ever. Uh, Nardo Gray. If you haven't seen it, look it up. Highly recommend it. It is a flat gloss gray that just looks. I mean, they could put that on any car and it'd be amazing. I believe Ford is currently dabbling with it for things like the Raptor and stuff. I believe you can get a Nardo Gray esque color. Uh, don't know what color or what it's called, but that is a also a very cool option that other car companies are. I think they've been doing it for years, but it'd be nice to see. It on more things like hell even Honda's and stuff it'd, it'd be nice so and that is around it for you also I guess have the Porsche 911 Turbo S and that is also in that 150 grand range as well and that thing's also very quick 540 horsepower if I'm not mistaken and obviously just another one in that realm so if you didn't want the r8 you could go for the porsche if that was a better body style for you it'd probably be pretty close to the same car obviously a little different different car different car company and i'm not completely sure the porsche has all-wheel drive now where was i porsche 911 turbo s uh my only issue with the porsche 911 turbos or any porsche 911 is they've been making the same damn car for how many years it's the same fucking thing every single time it's, it's another 911 another 911 another 911 sure they get quicker and quicker and then you get your gt3 and stuff like that but it's the same fucking car now same could be said for the r8 it doesn't change a lot in body style but it originally came out with a v8 it used to have a Five point three liter V eight, if I'm not mistaken, uh, and then they decided to upgrade. Well, okay, so they had V eight as an option, making still five hundred plus horsepower, and then you could get the V ten as an option. That was a very expensive option. Now, standard V eight, which is, or sorry, standard V ten, no V eight option available, which is fantastic. Morning. 87. Thank you. Do you want a receipt? Nope. Thank you. Alright. And also, now just starting in the last couple of years, no manual option for the V8. Sorry. V8, the R8. No manual options at all. And some people could be mad at that. Oh, boo -hoo, no manual. I've never cared for manuals, or it's never been a necessity for me. I have driven a lot of cool cars that I've sat in and been like, oh, I wish I had a manual, or maybe I had a manual and I just went, this feels right. Um, got to drive a friend's CTSV the other day. Now, only 2006, so only 400 horsepower, but it was still CTSB, still 400 horsepower. That thing was amazing, and it just felt correct with me. But I think once you get into dual clutch territory, just nothing's gonna beat it, and I don't mind not having the manual. I am 100% fine if everything's swapped to automatics. If we all had 10 speeds or seven speed dual clutches and stuff, I would be perfectly happy. A lot of people won't, but the manual is a dying breed. I mean, how many car companies don't even have them as an option for most of their regular vehicles? I'm sure you might be able to get it in their more performance, like a Honda Civic Si or your Camaro SS and that kind of stuff. Yeah, you can get manual. But why? The automatic can outshift nowadays any human. There's, there's no point. If I want to go as fast as I want, I want the automatic. Now, I guess there is something about 
being able to be the one to quote unquote deliver your own power, things like that. You're the one shifting the car, you're the one doing it. Eh, it's not for me. So, that's why for me, R8 would be one of the best contenders uh, for a supercar level. It's got the scent, it's got the power, it's got, for me, the looks, the colors, uh, all-wheel drive, always handy, and getting a used one isn't the worst thing in the world. They take a huge depreciation hit whenever you buy one new, so if you buy a used one, and of course they're in supercar territory, so you're never going to buy a used one with 80,000 miles and still get charged $100,000. Someone's already taken that major depreciation hit, and of course, if you get an older one, you're just getting a better deal. And another thing to think about is, with any super or high-end luxury car, uh, they're typically so far ahead of whatever you drive. So, like that CTSV I talked about, that thing already had in 2006 a full display. Uh, lumbar adjusting seats and everything, power seats, and they had uh, like 13 point adjusters on both sides, uh, heated seats and all that kind of stuff, and that was for 2006, and now most of that stuff is all standard. You might think, oh well, you know, that, none of that stuff's that crazy, but back in 2006, that was only for top of, top end luxury cars. No, no average day party had that kind of stuff, you wouldn't find that stuff typically in like Volkswagen Jetta, that kind of thing. No. So. And that's how almost all cars are. You get the best option or the highest end cars. They're typically so far ahead of you in technology and stuff like that where it's almost no comparison. So getting an older one, you will actually still most likely find. Of course, it's a race car, so you're not going to... It's a race luxury car, so you still probably have your heated and cool seats and all that kind of stuff. But that has a lot of weight. So I don't know, probably in a V10 Plus, they don't have those options. But you're still going to get all the amenities you want. You're still probably going to have Bluetooth. You're still probably going to have an aux cord. I guess maybe on the aux cord. I'm not quite sure on that. Uh, but you're going to have everything you need. You're still going to have cameras and stuff because it is the highest end luxury car. And it only goes to, or at least for the latest generation, we're looking at 2014 till now. And then there was a small generation of RAs from 2009-2013 slash beginning of 14. And then you have your older version from 2002 to 2009. So, depending on how old you want to get, you still have plenty of amenities and things like that. You still have air conditioning, all that kind of stuff. But I do implore you guys to just look at the... Uh, R8 as an option. It is a very cool car and I think it deserves a bit more attention than it gets. Now, yesterday I rated the Mustang uh, 7.5 out of 10. Reason for that is, uh, if 10 is the best, then I'd say it'd have to be safe for the very best cars. So I'm going to rate the R8 as a 9. Now, for me, it's my favorite car. Why not 10? Well, I mean, it could probably have more power. It could probably do other things. Uh, I'm not going to say it's the perfect car ever. It's still got its faults. Some people will say, oh, it's an Audi and it's going to be unreliable. I mean, maybe, maybe not. It is a supercar in there. Not a lot of people can see how reliable they are at 40,000 miles. So, I'm going with 9. That Mustang was at 7.5 because it is a very good car. The current generation is Mustang is a very good car, but I'm not saying it's the best car ever. So that's why I went with that number. And that's why I'm going with today's number. So, now that that's all wrapped up, Audi R8, good car, like it a lot, would love to have one. And I will leave you there with that. And as always, like, comment, subscribe. The rest of you have a good day.